Nassau is the capital of New Providence Island. One of the many islands of the Bahamas archipelago that extends for a thousand kilometers off both Cuba and Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Millions of tourists from all over the world travel to the 700 islands that are a bathing and diving paradise under the Caribbean sun. New Providence Island. Nassau has an international airport and many huge ocean-going cruise liners make for these shores. Nassau is the Bahamas' administrative and financial center and New Providence Island is commonly referred to as the Bahamas. The harbor is always busy with vessels of all shapes and sizes, and the pulsating life of this exotic tourist metropolis is truly impressive. It was the elitist jet set who first Americanized this tax haven, and soon mass tourism followed. But not everywhere. Tourism was and is, of course, the logical method by which to capitalize from this idyllic region. And conch sellers are always in demand. Each year, three and a half million tourists come to the Bahamas, most of whom stay on New Providence Island, mainly close to Nassau. Cruise ships, Nassau is a must. Each cruise ship that travels the Caribbean anchors in its harbor that is conveniently situated in the center of the city. Around two thirds of the island's 300,000 inhabitants live on New Providence and work directly or indirectly for the tourist industry. The Exuma Islands can be visited by powerboat. The yacht harbor is also very large and looks as though each member of the local population has their own boat moored here. There's a good selection of boat tours available to the surrounding islands. There are also numerous fishing boats. Seafood is popular with the local people as well as with the island's visitors. Here, there are some small stalls where the day's catch is prepared, cooked and offered for sale, as fresh as fresh can get. The daily demand for fish, conch and other seafood is quite amazing. Fortunately, the ocean here has not been devastated by overfishing. Samuel Cunard, legendary founder of the Cunard Line, established the first maritime route from New York to Nassau. His steamboat, the Karnak, took five days to travel the 2,000 kilometers to the islands. In 1859, that was a sensation. Today, cruises are commonplace and passenger lists of up to 4,000 are not uncommon. Cruising is becoming increasingly popular. Those who don't want to walk through the city can sit back and enjoy the sights in a horse and carriage, traveling through Bay Street and its atmospheric side streets. The journey travels along the city's lanes, past many sites that are described by the coachman. Nassau is a city without skyscrapers. 
the city centre and many of its buildings that date back to the 18th and 19th centuries are surrounded by the residential areas of the middle classes. The central shopping street makes the city look almost as though it is a gold prospector's settlement that has grown too fast. The route travels up the city's hills, past colonial buildings and a statue of Christopher Columbus that is located by the steps of a government building. The city is quite squat and none of its buildings is taller than the palm trees. The charming old town with its tangled lanes and alleys reaches up to the harbour. Colourful houses and shops stand side by side. And in some areas the noise and hectic traffic destroys the Caribbean atmosphere. After 30 minutes or so our horse and carriage returns to the harbour with its many cruise liners. The statue of Christopher Columbus surveys both harbour and city from Government House, almost as though he's just landed there. The Spanish discovered this island paradise in 1492. The Bahamian government resides in the pink-coloured colonial buildings of Parliament Square that were built between 1805 and 1813 in the traditional design of the American Confederate States. Within a small park is both the library that is situated in what was once a prison, as well as the Bahamas' noble Supreme Court building. Everyone is permitted to observe the trials, but short trousers are forbidden. The statue of Queen Victoria serves as a reminder that the islands were annexed by England in 1684. They gained their independence in 1973. Opposite is a bronze bust created by Bahamian sculptor Randolph Johnston that commemorates the first governor of the independent Bahamas, Milo Butler. An idyllic cleft in the rock walls of Bennett's Hill is popular with sightseers. A narrow and shady canyon, lush and green. A small waterfall and several springs sustain the green palms and marvellous flowers. An ideal photo opportunity in these fine surroundings. Slaves were once forced to carve out the 65 steps of the Queen's staircase into the limestone at the end of the canyon. This is the shortest route from the city up to Fort Fincastle. Pirates and hostilities by the French and Spanish made it essential to have strong defences. So several forts were built at strategic locations. One of these was Montego Fort on Nassau's western headland, an indication of the former power of the British Crown in this remote corner of the world. Captain Woods Rogers was the first governor and he settled more than a thousand pirates here under his control, partly by negotiation, partly by force. The Bahamas was the stronghold of pirates that had been legalized by the British and who robbed the richly laden trading ships that traveled from the New World to Europe. Because the slaves couldn't read or write, the only way they could communicate was during the Sunday church service, during which they could talk and sing.
The slaves came with their lords. Following the founding of the USA, several thousand British loyalists came here from North America so that they could continue to live under the rule of the British crown. They built churches and attempted to establish an economy that was based upon the cultivation of plantations. However, in 1834, slavery was made illegal by the British. The slaves were freed and remained on the islands clinging to their newfound religious faith. The local agriculture that had been based on slavery collapsed. Even today, the Bahamians are a religious people and the number of churches exceeds by far the number of bars. More than 24 religions are to be found on the islands. Pastel-coloured, picture-postcard perfect buildings decorate the streets. The timber-built buildings of clapboard design have all been renovated. From the verandas of these buildings that enjoy a cool sea breeze, there's always a good view of huge cruise liners. Nassau has many contrasts, noise and busy traffic in the centre, particularly when the liners unload their passengers. And on the outskirts, villas with tidy gardens and colourful blossom, tranquil and relaxing. The Bahamas is sometimes referred to as the Atlantic Switzerland. This is because it's a tax haven and has more than 400 banks. The shopping streets in the city centre become hopelessly crowded when up to 11 huge cruise ships lie at anchor here. Because Nassau is a free trade area and is untaxed, goods can be purchased at a good price, so it's also a shopper's paradise. As Cuba is only 300 kilometers away, it's hardly surprising that its world-famous cigars are also to be found here in profusion. In the center of Nassau is the huge British colonial hotel, decadent luxury that has survived the passage of time. Railroad tycoon Henry Flagler had it built in 1923 as he was eager to develop tourism in the Bahamas. A large number of splendid guest houses are also available, and the hospitality of the Bahaman Mama is well known all over the world. The colourful and typical Caribbean straw market is always frenetic. Here it's possible to observe skillful woodcarvers creating various objects out of mahogany. Bags, baskets and hats made of braided straw are also on offer. Very popular with those who want to take back home with them a typical memento of the Bahamas. Shopping and sightseeing make for thirsty work. So the bars are kept busy and the drinks are colourful and exotic. Healthy appetites are also well catered for, and vast quantities of mussels and starfish are available, although it's not advisable to buy them. Even though the saleswoman offers them with a tempting smile. Everywhere there are reminders of the pirates who once lived here and outside the city are their caves, close to the coast road. It was here that the pirates hid their booty, which they sold in Nassau without any respect for the law. This was the domain of Captain Blackbeard. And how does it look here today?
The caves of Arawak Cay were once inhabited by the Arawak Indians of the Stone Age, the island's primeval inhabitants. The caves were subsequently used by pirates. Today, there's a popular restaurant area for both tourists and locals alike. It's also the best place to try a conch. And on an artificial island just off the coast is where fresh water supplies from Andros Island are stored. But what would this holiday paradise be without Cable Beach? Here, lavish hotel complexes rub shoulders with busy casinos. Huge hotel complexes lie next to magnificent sandy beaches, and it's extremely difficult to find a week when it isn't busy. Here, there's every kind of water sport, as well as bikini-clad beauties. A subtropical El Dorado for one and all. The courageous glide above the beach by parachute and watch the water scooter races down below, showing off to the ladies. The botanical garden measures seven hectares and contains tropical flowers, bushes and exotic trees. About 1,600 varieties of plant grow here. Flowers and blossoms shine out in all the glorious colors of the Caribbean. A treat for all the senses. The remote location of the Bahamas favored the development of numerous exotic plants that are to be found only on the islands of this archipelago. The humid climate promotes their growth. Seven varieties of palm trees surround small ponds that are adorned with beautiful water lilies. also popular with local children. The island settlers introduced foreign plants that combined with the indigenous plants and created new and wonderful varieties. On a small hill on the western outskirts of Nassau is Fort Charlotte, today a popular tourist destination on the periphery of the city, once a daunting fortification. In order to protect the city, the island's governor, Lord Dunmore, ordered the construction of this imposing complex in 1787. 42 cannon were kept at the ready. From here, access to the harbour was well monitored. Today, it's only the peaceful liners of the tourist industry that invade the area. Tourist guides lead us through the complex with its many firing slots and take us down into the fortress dark and eerie interior. Soldiers lived here alongside weaponry. The steep stone walls of the fort are surrounded by a dry ditch and the only access to the fort is by way of a drawbridge. A jitney bus tour is a must, an urban adventure of a special kind. A great way to discover the island.
Chitneys are small buses that travel through the city and to each corner of the island both day and night. Their striking appearance is unique to the island. They're in service from early morning to late at night. Here the traffic travels on the left. Passengers pay when disembarking, get off where they choose. The perfect bus service. After almost half an hour's drive, we arrive at our destination in the middle of the island, the Bacardi Rum Factory. We're informed how white rum and many other drinks are made and are also treated to several tastings. Back on the western edge of Nassau is the Ardastra Gardens that are open to the public. A two hectare botanical garden and adjoining zoo. For school children, this is a big adventure. Enthralled, the children observe the animals such as cute monkeys and a sleeping pot-bellied pig. Trees provide shade on the many paths that lead through the park. And water springs that emerge from huge shells create a harmonic atmosphere. As though of stone, an alligator rests in a pool, surrounded by exotic nature. A peacock nobly struts its stuff, as if the ruler of all it surveys. Turtles in small ponds stretch their necks curiously in each direction, and exotic birds are everywhere. This is a truly wonderful sight. It's a little like being on a Noah's Ark of the Caribbean. Mongoose stand guard. Goats, geese and peacocks walk freely. Large parrots entertain. They're very adept at interacting with people and even seem to expect to converse with them. The feeding of the birds is quite an adventure. Both the brave and the not so brave try their luck at feeding the colorful birds. Particularly special attraction are the trained flamingos that perform tricks several times a day. An animal trainer dressed in the uniform of a military general directs the eager to please Flamingo Ballet Corps. Afterwards, the performers place themselves professionally between their audience for a photo shoot, then walk in a circle. Paradise Island. The region's most recent landmark is situated on this five kilometer long island, Atlantis Resort. Directly outside this legendary complex, the imposing luxury yachts of the super rich lie at anchor. Atlantis and the sea in each of its many facets are the central theme of this unique hotel complex a realm of myth and legend. Its architecture contains much artistic detail, as well as local influence, such as in Marina Village, within the hotel's very own harbour.
The origin, fate and existence of the submerged island realm have been featured in several myths and legends. Atlantis is said to have existed in many places around the world, yet its existence has never been proved. But Atlantis has always fired the imagination, including that of the creator of this resort, Sol Kurtzner, who was inspired by the ancient myth. The hotel complex has around 3,600 guest rooms. The first sight of this huge complex brings to mind limitless pleasure in a world of relaxation, entertainment and luxury beneath the tropical Caribbean sun. Atlantis, the biggest adventure oasis in the world. A world of fantasy. By way of casinos and various entertainments, South African hotel tycoon Sol Kurtzner has created a mega luxury resort in the style of Las Vegas. His experience of similar projects has undoubtedly helped him to create this incredible watery realm that is situated between two pink 23-story towers. In open pools are manta rays, huge turtles and 200 other kinds of marine life that swim alongside their human counterparts. The seven pools are called lagoons due to their immense size and provide visitors with an amazing glimpse into a fascinating underwater world. Bathing fun is guaranteed in the various pools and each has its own name and individual design. An unusual fantasy building that was inspired by the ancient myths of Atlantis forms the entrance into the gigantic underwater world of this wonderful hotel complex. For most who visit Predator Lagoon, its 30 meter long underwater tunnel is an unforgettable experience. To make the impressive view of the fish even more dramatic, every now and then divers swim through the resort's huge aquariums. The large variety of creatures featured here is remarkable. There are more than 20,000 fish. The sight of all these creatures is quite awe-inspiring with all their many shapes, sizes and colors. It's easy to be mesmerized by this legendary submerged island realm. Following our visit to the underwater world of the aquariums, we return to the surface and to the feeding of the sharks, which is an adventure in itself. Splendid sandy beaches are also a special feature of the Atlantis Resort and several water sports are available. A wonderful world of entertainment for a perfect holiday, with each and every need catered for. A dream come true. There's also an adventure world with waterfalls and rope bridges and various exciting tunnels.
here, the water scenery is totally unique. And water slides lead from Mayan pyramids into numerous pools. Ultimate holiday fun is without limit. A fact that attracts people here from all over the world. The hotel's success was not created by luck. Sol Kurtzner, creator of the Atlantis Resorts, had several highly successful years in the hotel industry. At the beginning of the 1980s, Kurtzner caused much excitement by the creation of his South African casino resort of Sun City, a fantastic financial success. It was his wish that the Atlantis Resort on the Bahamian island of Paradise Island would be the finest resort of its kind anywhere in the world. Floating past exotic buildings while observing this fantasy world from below is pure delight. And the wild water channels are exciting. The open sea has been tamed by way of artificial reefs, so calm lagoons and sandy beaches have been created. No dangerous sea currents here. The gentle surf gives the impression of a sheltered bay, and even poor swimmers are able to bathe here in the Caribbean Sea free from danger. For those who want to experience the untamed power of the sea, there's also real surf and a natural beach. Here, swimming is sometimes impossible due to the powerful surf. A further attraction of the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island is one of the most popular of the entire complex, Dolphin Cay. A world of dolphins that swim in front of the Atlantis skyline. So far, more than 30 of these creatures have settled here. Here, under the supervision of their trainers, one is able to experience these clever and amicable creatures at close quarters. They shake hands. and pull bathers with their mouths through the water. The dolphins are always rewarded by their trainers. Everyone has fun here, although some must first overcome their fear of the four meter long mammals. The powerful bottlenose dolphins in Dolphin K conquer the hearts of both young and old alike. Here, the legend of Atlantis unites with all the style of Las Vegas. Close by on the same island is a park, Versailles Gardens. However, on seeing the park, it seems that whoever gave it its name had not set eyes on the original Versailles. This tranquil area was created by American multimillionaire Huntington Harford on what was then an untouched island. This was where he liked to walk. Based on European models, numerous artistic figures were placed here and the slope was transformed into various terraces connected by steps. Statues of Hercules to Franklin D. Roosevelt adorn the neat garden complex that is now popular for wedding ceremonies.
The eccentric, or as some may say, the visionary originator of tourism on the Bahamas also had another idea. He called it the cloisters. In 1962, Huntington Harford discovered the ruins of a 14th century Augustinian monastery in the south of France. He purchased the ruins and had them relocated here, stone by stone. The result is still impressive even today. This medieval cloister was meant to impress his constantly changing wives and lady friends. Indeed, it's easy to believe that his efforts were not in vain. However, at the end of the 1960s, he fell on hard times. Harford was forced to sell and the Mary Carter Color Factory of Tampa, Florida became the new owner of the island. Shortly after this, the color factory closed down and the Resort International Company was founded. The foundation stone for a new future had been laid. And a casino license also attracted visitors from the United States. Further hotels were built and the owners of Resort International were frequent and many. Blue Lagoon Island. We leave Paradise Island by ferry boat and travel to the next island. A private place that can only be visited for a few hours. The sightseers know what awaits them as they've paid for their trip. We travel out of the harbour that is busy with ferry boats and yachts. In the Bahamas, everything happens on the water. On the island shoreline are the villas of the world's super rich, who seldom come here. The jet setters are too busy making more money to give themselves time to relax. Passengers gaze at the villas and yachts in the hope of spotting a famous star of stage or screen. It takes about 20 minutes to travel to the entrance of the sheltered bay of the Blue Lagoon. The small entrance into the hidden harbour lagoon can be easily missed. But now the tourists have arrived in the calm bay and long landing stages that lead to dolphin encounters. The arriving passengers rush to the area of the water pools that are only accessible by way of wooden bridges. It's a realm of maritime fauna. From a distance one can see dolphins jumping out of the water as though showing their joy at seeing their new guests. First, there's an explanation of the dolphin project. Then we meet the stars of the show. They have many skills and the audience looks on and learns more of what's involved from both trainers and dolphins. But now things are really starting to happen. The great moment has come. Many enter the warm water in with the dolphins. Then the dolphins are kissed, photographed, stroked, and sometimes feared. The animals are quite large and well at home in the water. They appear to be very understanding and become even more friendly. And soon even the reticent become at ease with these intelligent creatures.
everyone is enjoying the experience. This is where the popular TV series Flipper was filmed that is popular with all members of the family. Some brave participants attempt to copy the trainer's commands and the dolphins duly comply as requested. There are many marvelous stories of these creatures, how they've rescued people from the sea and assisted the disabled. This experience certainly gives us a most fascinating insight. The dolphins shake hands with their guests as though performing in a circus. Next, they show off their tricks. They jump in a huge arc above those in the water and are well rewarded. Then they whirl round in the water. And catch a tasty snack. And even kiss while moving through the water. They're always playful. Then they push some of their human visitors through the water and perform various jumps. The end of the show reaches a spectacular climax. Everyone has thoroughly enjoyed this wonderful adventure. Both humans and dolphins twirl around in the water, splashing and having fun. One thing's for sure, Flipper is everyone's friend. Exuma Case. The Exuma Islands can be visited by powerboat. They're 60 kilometers from Nassau. The speeding boat glides powerfully across the water. After an hour, we see some wonderful bays. Our first stop is Allen's Cay a tiny, unspoiled island. What an experience. There's a large number of dragon iguanas, a primeval sight. Thousands and thousands of iguanas and huge lizards once lived on the islands and caves of the Bahamian archipelago. Today, they're threatened by extinction and are protected. The few creatures that inhabit this tropical island are very docile and keep at a safe distance from visitors. The name Iguana originates from the language of the South American Indians. There are 850 varieties of Iguana and they are found mainly in America. They have strong legs and their tail is as long as their body. Their crests are well developed and they're able to change color. These iguanas are mainly meat eaters, but they also like fruit, as well as grapes provided by the tourists. The dreamy bay is ideal for bathing, diving and snorkeling. Local fishermen arrive on their boats and offer us their daily catch. Much haggling takes place. After a short journey, we arrive at our final destination, Channel K, one of more than 365 sunny islands of Exuma Kays. Here, the tour organizers have erected their own dwellings in small sheltered bays. 
Simple wooden constructions on posts within the water. Welcome to paradise. Is there anything more relaxing than sitting in warm water while stroking a ray? Yes, paradise really does exist on this tiny dream island. Fresh fish and seafood is appetizingly prepared, plus a fresh salad. The longed for Caribbean feeling is almost complete. This is the place in which to forget the pressures of everyday life. A perfect place in the sun. On top of the hill, there's a good view of the bay and also a nice breeze. The perfect place for those who want to live like Robinson Crusoe. No ancient temples, tropical rainforests or spectacular volcanoes here. The sandy beaches glitter in the sunlight and the crystal clear water around the island shines green blue. This is the ideal location for marine fauna and flora. The Bahamas enjoys the warm sea currents of both the Antilles Stream and the Gulf Stream. Sand K. This exotic little island in the sun is the final stop on our trip around this island paradise. Remote and endless like freckles in the blue and green glimmering sea are the many small caves in the center of the Bahamas. Wonderful sandy beaches and palm trees that gently sway in the breeze. No wonder it was here that the hammock was invented. Ernest Hemingway once wrote that the sand blinded him so much that his eyes hurt. But the idyll can also be deceptive. Over the centuries, the dangerous shadows around the islands have become a graveyard for more than 500 ships. If one could walk on the seabed, the caves would be the peaks of 5,000 meter high mountains flattened by the elements. The ocean surf plays with the pebbles on the beach. Each of these islands has its own special charm. The 19th of January 1977 is a date that the Bahamians will never forget. Various unusual weather conditions brought not a devastating hurricane, but snow. NASA's first astronauts were captivated as they flew above the islands. The tiny sparkles in the huge blue ocean appeared like sparkling gems. The temperature of the warm sea currents of this island paradise remains pretty much the same from season to season. The dependable tropical climate of the Bahamas means dry, frost-free winters and humid summers. Hopefully climate change will not disturb this natural balance. The Bahamas are also called the June Islands because on the 21st of June the sun is at a right angle here, the Tropic of Cancer. 
The Spanish who discovered these islands 500 years ago had little interest in beautiful beaches and clear water. They wanted to pass by the Bahama, the shallow sea, unscathed, in order to safely guide their richly laden ships home. Today, everyone loves this magnificent paradise. The Bahamas. The very name conjures up remote sandy beaches and turquoise blue water, romantic sunsets and tropical nights. Here, holiday dreams become incredible reality.